Now for these questions, we're dividing whole numbers by 100. But except for 400, the numbers that we're dividing by, so our dividends, are not multiples of 100. They're not numbers that are in the 100 times table. And that means that we're going to get decimals as our answers. So first, we have 4 divided by 100. So what we can do is write out the number 4 and then put a decimal point on the end. Because remember, we really have an invisible decimal point on the end of every whole number. Then we copy down the decimal point. Now we're dividing, so the number is going to get smaller. Because when you divide by any number larger than 1, your answer gets smaller. And we're dividing by 100, which has two zeros. So the digit is going to move two squares. So if we copy this 4 down, 1, 2 squares to the right, we now have some empty squares either side of the decimal point. But remember, the digit after the decimal point is the tenth digit. So we need to write 0 in here to show that this 4 is now in our hundredths place value column. And the digit before the decimal point is the ones digit. So we need 0 in here as well because we can never have an empty ones column. So that gives us our answer, 0 0.04. Now we have 40 divided by 100. So again, we write out the number 40 with a decimal point on the end. We copy down the decimal point. We're dividing, so the digits are moving to the right. And we're dividing by 100, which has two zeros. So the digits will move two squares to the right. So if we copy this 0 down, 1, 2 squares to the right, and do the same with this 4, we get 0 0.40. But again, the digit before the decimal point is the 1's digit, so we need to write 0 in here so that we don't have an empty 1's column. So that gives us 0 0.40. But we don't need this 0 in our hundredths column because 0 0.40 is the same as 0 0.4. All this zero here tells us is that we don't have any hundredths, so we can ignore zeros if they're on the end of decimals. Now, we have 67 divided by 100. So, we write out the number with the decimal point on the end, copy down the decimal point, and move each digit one, two squares across. We need a zero in our empty ones column, and now that gives us our answer, 0 0.67. Now we have 400 divided by 100. Now you might already know that the answer is 4, but let's use the same method that we've been using so far, just to show that it works. So with 400, we can write out the number and the decimal point on the end. We copy down the decimal point and move each digit one, two squares across. That gives us 4.00. But remember, when you have a decimal point and then zeros on the end of a number, you have a whole number. So 4.00 is the same as 4. Now notice our answers so far. When we had four ones and we divided by a hundred, we got four hundredths. When we had four tenths and divided by a hundred, we got four tenths. And when we had four hundredths and divided by a hundred, we got four ones. That's because dividing by a hundred is like dividing by ten and then dividing by ten again. So the digits move two place values to the right. Now we have 399 divided by 100. We write out the number, copy down the decimal point, and move each digit two squares across. That gives us our answer, 3.99. Now 401 divided by 100, so copy down the decimal point, move the digits two squares across, and we get 4.01, and this time, we need to remember to include this zero 
because it's between other digits, so it's a placeholder. If we didn't write this zero, the one would be in our tenths column, but we need to show that the one has moved two squares across, so is now in our hundredths column. That's why we need a zero in our tenths. Now notice, 400 divided by 100 was exactly 4. 399 is just a little bit less than 400, so our answer was just a little bit less than 4. And 401 is just a little bit more than 400, so our answer was just a little bit more than 4. Let's have a look at this first question. 4 divided by 100. So, we have 4 whole rectangles. But remember, dividing by 100 is the same as just keeping one part out of 100. So, we can show one part out of 100 on each of our 4 rectangles. But then, when we put these 4 parts together, we now have 4 parts out of 100, or 4 hundredths, of one whole rectangle. So that's why our answer is 0 0.04, because remember, the second digit after the decimal point is the hundredths digit. Thank you so much for watching, I really hope that was helpful. If you're a teacher or a parent, then please subscribe, or go to keystage2maths.com to download resources for this lesson and many more. That's all for now, I'll see you in the next video.